Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find more episodes on any major podcasting platform such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and even on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow and like Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook. This is Mo Lowry and you are listening to the Spoiler Force Podcast. Alright, so this is episode 56 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is someone that I am extremely excited to have. Someone whose content and pretty much career I've seen for the past couple of years now grow and it's pretty amazing to see how far he's come. You may know his videos of his anime critiquing videos or commentating videos and his comedic style as well. He also streams and plays Jump Force so you can catch those hands as well. <laughs> Let me introduce my guest, Mo Lowry. Thank you so much for being oh, on the podcast. Oh, hello. Much appreciation. Thank you for having me. Whoo. Hey. Man. I like the jump force. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've been watching some of your highlights, man. Like, it's it's pretty crazy to see how you went from, like, just climbing up the ranks of jump force. I don't really play that game, but to see you put up, like, the rankings and versing, like, top-tier players, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. I told myself, because I don't know if I'm going to ever be this good in another video game again, so I might as well just go all out and ride it to the game, stop being played all over. Because I don't want to be like, when the PS5 come out, still talking about, man, I remember back in Jump Force, man, I was up. <laughs> I might as well just get out of my system now and talk as much trash as I want to, and then let it be. <laughs> And that's what's crazy, right? Because you get all those messages from, like, other players who talk so much shit to you. And they're like, you come catch these hands, da 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 And then, like, there's even people, like, um, placing money and trying to bet with you, too. And Yeah. <laughs> like, man, they're all, and it's, I'm a cool guy for folks just to hit me up. And it was like, you, hey, can we run a match of Jump Force? Are you trying to spar and Jump Force? I'd be cool. But folks just come in talking real reckless. I like, get the reverse psychology not going to work. But just because you popped in typing all tough, I'm just going to have to flex you real quick. Make you a highlight. Cyberbullying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've seen um, your, some of your gameplay with the newer characters, too, right? Because I know they added Todoroki and Bakugo yeah. in the game, too. Yeah, flex a few folks just so I'm not no one-trick pony. Because everybody <laughs> using your custom character. That's the only reason. Nah, buddy. That excuse is invalid over here. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to brag on my jump for skills, though. Because I got beat up a few times, too. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. that's how you get better at the game, right? You got to take some L's and then give other people L's. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Goku wouldn't have been a Super Saiyan if he ain't take those L's beforehand. You're right. Which one's your favorite character so far, besides your created character? Uh, My favorite character besides my created character, I'd probably say Young Bakugo. I like the way he uh plays. Because I never really played with the other characters besides. Like, the created character is the reason I really got the game. Just because it's like, I'm already doing all this anime-related talk stuff. But I can create my own character. Like, character customization for me is a big thing. Folks, if they come in on my stream and I can customize a character, I might spend like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes picking Damn. an outfit. Just because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because. I, I saw on your Instagram you had the Lemillion costume now. Yes. Yes, they, they just dropped that and I had to do certain uh, events to catch that. So I get, let me make sure so I can add it to the closet. But I didn't reach my rank, uh, my uh, goal rank in Jump Force, so it's kind of not fun anymore. And me being such a high rank, it's kind of hard to play for fun because people are like, oh, man, I'm playing a high rank. So if I win, I'm going to make it a highlight. But I'm just trying to use random moves and play for fun. But, yeah, so I'm just trying to debate if I want to retire or just find another game to play or just restart because i know some of the top tier people in that game they'll make new accounts just to play they rank back up again just to prove a point but i don't know if i want to do that there's games i ain't played yet ps5 coming out soon so oh, I, need to, I know i need to get i saw, I saw some like of the people. highlights of that I, I didn't watch the entire reveal but i saw like spider-man uh, miles morales i saw the resident evil stuff Lots of good games that, or have games that have a lot of good potential for PS5. Um, How, are oh, you sorry. a PlayStation or Xbox? Sorry to cut you off. That's all right. Um, I'm, I'm a, I grew up PlayStation, but I also played Xbox because of Halo. 
Okay. Um, but I, I definitely gear towards more PlayStation. But I haven't really owned a system since like PS3 because I, I just gave up. Once once all the games had like DLC and add-on content, I was man. just like, oh my man, goodness, they're just yeah. taking my money, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's more, yeah, DLC more expensive than rent nowadays. I feel you. I definitely feel you. Yeah, oh, Because like, like a lot of games, man, like. I kind of missed that era where you ha- where you could buy a game for like 30 40 bucks and have the complete game, right? And then now mm-hmm. these games come in incomplete. <laughs> Man, like, like, like what? And, and, it, and it's crazy because some people don't didn't even grow up like that. Like they just grew up thinking Fortnite was the origin of video games. Like, man, no, we didn't have to pay for stuff in the game. After we had to unlock the characters by putting all nighters in. Yeah. Not just your mama's <laughs> card, man. It's, just, it's a different world, man. Oh man. <laughs> It's a different world nowadays. And it's crazy because saying that, we the old people now. Like, back in my day, we used oh, to have man, old I know, right? <laughs> We sound like old heads. That's exactly, that's exactly right. It's like we're comparing generations of games. Like, well, PlayStation 2, man, we had the big block cylinder one, not the slim one. Right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I am thankful to be able to, like, uh, be in the phase to where I can still enjoy a video game. Because some people, like, their pinnacle of video games like Sonic on the Sega. So they don't they, they don't know anything about the new graphics and then see like how real video games are far they even came along. So they get man, I'm glad I was able I'm able to still enjoy video games. A lot of the old school gamers they can't even adjust to these new games anymore. Nope. Like like even um not even like not even old heads like even like when you, if you watch like the uh, I, I'm a big Street Fighter guy right so I love watching okay. Street Fighter tournaments and stuff like when you see players play from Street Fighter three to the new one right now with like what Street Fighter five Ultimate mm-hmm. or something like that they can't even transition as well as they used to when they were playing the older games all these new players are coming up that are even exceeding them with the new Street Fighter yeah it, it's just wild man it, it's, yeah it's just wild how they do it but they still got me getting my money what for I say hurry up and take my money and so, <laughs> <laughs> they, they Dude, got me still. speaking of that man like I love how you do that with your videos right you have you have all those little annotations or ad libs with like different references of cartoons and stuff like one i was watching one of your older videos yesterday and you had like the the bobby hill uh catchphrase you know don't give me back my purse yeah. i don't know you hey. <laughs> throwing that in with anime and stuff man it's it's so good to to have that like mix up of just references and with the modern day anime and um you know for fans who don't know who you are but can you kind of just explain like how you started with this whole like i guess commentary that's how i see it but commentary of just anime and making videos because i i remember when i first saw some of your videos man it was right when dragon ball super was starting and you were doing the tournament of power i would wait yeah i would wait for your videos to drop and like to see your reviews actually (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's cool though you really been here then shouts out to you man yeah because uh so i i'm a comedian and uh the place uh i stayed in illinois for a while and then i would throw comedy shows so well first off i didn't like done so much stuff around the community like i i was a highlight person in school so all the kids know me and then the parents know me because like who is this goofy dude doing all of this and then i worked at the boys and girls club so i knew like, the younger generation and then they parents and then i worked i was a journalist on the news for a while so that I've reached a whole different audience from just being on the news as well. So I would try to throw comedy shows because everybody's like, oh, you're so entertaining. You should do comedy, even though I was already doing comedy. I'm like, well, I already do it, so you can come to my show. And I'll throw these shows, but no one would come. But I'm like, it's perseverance, so I'm not going to give up. So I would keep doing these shows, and it would get to me because I'll throw these shows, and no one would show up. Security guard will leave. Because I ain't going to be breaking up no fights for what? Who else here? Ain't nothing but my imaginary friend and Casper at these shows. But then it would get me because I would go to Walmart after the show just to walk around. And it was like, one time I counted 43 people walked up to me. Hey, didn't you have a comedy show coming up, man? I want to go. <laughs> when, when's the next one? I'll make sure I go. That's what would keep inspiring me to throw another one because people will walk up and be like, man, I knew you had a comedy show. I missed this one, but I'm going to go to the next one. Then the next one pop up. No one show up. So I came to the conclusion. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to talk about what I feel like talking about. And that same Saturday, like I threw a comedy show maybe like uh, it was a Monday because like, Mo Lowry Monday. Yeah, Mo Mo. Yeah, that's how I like to remember it. But through one Monday, nobody came. And I said, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And it just happened to be uh, the week Goku and Jiren fought. And I'm like, you know what, Goku, I watched that fight and Goku got flexed for an hour straight. And I said, I got to <laughs> talk about this. And that was my first uh, commentary video. And bada bang, bada boom, we here. And it's just it's just 
crazy how that, like, man, nobody come to my shows. I, it's, it kind of remind me of how, like, Vegeta went Super Saiyan. I remember Vegeta was struggling to go Super Saiyan for a few seasons, and Sony said, bump it. I don't care about Kakarot. I don't care about that other kid. I don't care about nothing. Super Saiyan! So, <laughs> it's just <laughs> weird how stuff worked out. But, yeah, man, my first uh, video was talking about when Goku got flexed by Jiren, and then people on the internet caught a liking to it and i kept talking about tournament of power videos and i just here we are today i, I mean, made it to the spoiler for his podcast man so it, yeah it, like, like i said man i i loved seeing your content grow from the beginning man it's you know like i love how you use the vegeta reference right where he he just said fuck it <laughs> you know, Basically, like, yeah i don't know about the cuss on here so i didn't want to say it oh no, no you can you can swear on here it's okay <laughs> Deal. Yeah, with, with youtube's regulations and shit i gotta make sure everything's like you know not yeah. so kids can't jump on this stuff <laughs> but i, I love how like how much you know about anime too you know it's not just like stuff that's mainstream like you you pick with like old school anime or even cartoons like with uh, the boondocks and uh, avatar and a bunch of different videos and you use all that knowledge that you have and just mix it up with all the references like i've said with the bobby hill stuff man it, it's <coughs> super creative and that i think that's why for me like when i watch your content you kind of just stood out and what's what's great too is that you didn't have to show your face like you just made the audio recording put it yeah. up with the clips and then put it out there and then everyone just kind of knew who this was and you know even myself i catch myself saying that some of the things that you say you know like on oh, justice catch these oh, hands art <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> you know like I, I catch myself saying some of these things sometimes and i'm like damn dude like mo Lowry's influence is kind of there you know? <laughs> right yeah man it's, I, I like the uh because I pick stuff that I can talk about that I actually know because, man, comment sections will eat you up if you say something wrong. Like, they'll avoid everything else you said just to pick what you said wrong. Like, that's why I really don't talk about too much, like, Marvel or anything because it's like, yeah, some people know Marvel from the movies or from the shows on Fox Kids, but for the folks who actually read the comic books, yeah, you can't test their knowledge yet. If you actually read issue 77, Spider-Man's real name is actually Peter Parker, but the P is silent. If you're ready, you would get the name, bro, chill. <laughs> I think that the multiverse is actually so I don't feel like arguing with folks in the comment section because I will argue. I know a lot of people who uh, got a nice following. They don't want to look like that. So they'll let folks go crazy in the comment section. Ignore it. Hey, I'll cut your ass out, fam. <laughs> Just for fun. Bump it. I'm a human too now. Well, I think they can talk a whole bunch of reckless words and don't get a response. Ha! Huh? Not on this page. Yeah, mama breath stank. I don't want to just assume that it's cancel culture, but that's what it kind of leads to, right? Like this mob yeah. mentality of of fans who like someone's content and then kind of gives them this uh, entitlement to be like, you know, because I watch your videos, I can kind of just say whatever I want to you, not knowing that the content creator it's themselves, like they they read and see your stuff. Yes. Whether it's good yes. or bad, we can see what you're saying to us. We just and choose it, to not respond. Exactly. And then they just, because it's, it's the internet, folks just tough behind the keyboard. It's crazy. Folks will never say nothing like that in your face. But boy, get them a keyboard and a, a Facebook page with a nickname. Hey, <laughs> it's my brand new. When you started, you had quite a bit of followers, like like over 100,000 or maybe yeah. even more than that. I, yeah. yeah. What happened, though? Like, I know you got so, hacked. But yeah. So my first page, okay, so Tournament of Power happen and then because it's a time like because really i've only been i'm in my sophomore year still of, of what people have caught up on me because dragon ball super ain't been gone for that long so i've only been doing this for two years and some change uh so my first page gets hacked because this is when do you okay so if you're on facebook you know when facebook start trying to do this facebook business and all that stuff yeah yeah okay well so when they had that update somebody had contacted me and i'm thinking it was somebody from facebook but it wasn't and it was showing me there was someone to give me a tutorial on how to do this facebook business deal and learn the ropes but as soon as i like signed in the facebook business they got access to the page and they kicked me out and i'm like Arr! and i couldn't do nothing about it and it's tough to find somebody from facebook support because they really it's, you can't really contact somebody unless you relate to somebody because everything will be a did you mean this or are you searching for this related topics to what you're looking for but you can't really find a human to talk to so my first page got hacked at 250k and that happened in march because i fundamentally I got to meet some people from Funimation. And then I made another page, uh, March, April, May, in May. So May to the, the next year of May, because Black History Month, I dropped like a video every day. 
in March, April. Yeah, and then it got that page got taken down at 110k over copyright. But I don't fully know it's copyright. I'm just assuming because every time my page got taken down, I would get a like, if you continue to do this and violate terms, you can get in trouble, and we can uh, ban you for so such amount of time. What just a warning, and I would click OK. But after I click OK, the page is just gone. Damn. I'm like, damn, back arrow, back arrow, back arrow. This page is, this, this link is broken. Get the man. So then I stopped and took like a little month break. Then I made another page, and then for another year, probably took itself to like a hundred k, and then that got deleted. And then I'm back. I'm on my fourth Facebook page, and that just touched fifty k. And I've really been lackluster on that, cause man, the way I'm, cause I I made one, and then. Uh, they took that one down because they said your name is like popping up as a person's name who was violating our terms, so we can't have your page up type deal. So I had to make a, a Mo Larry with a different name, but it's a loophole around the system. So it's yeah, it's been a, a rough journey, man. Are you a Pokemon trainer? You ever play Pokemon growing up? Uh, yes, I I started with Pokemon Red. Oh yeah, you a real yeah. trainer? Then. Yeah, I started with Pokemon Red. I, I had the. Uh... My parents bought me the uh, the Game Boy Color, the lime green one. I still remember. <laughs> I was okay. like four or five, I think, and they I bought the me the one. So, yeah. do you remember that feeling when you're playing Pokemon and like a battery falls out and you didn't save, or you oh, just playing Pokemon? Shit. That's the feeling I would have because it's never the same. But I mean, you learn more because you know, all right, I'm gonna go this route to catch these Pokemon. I know I need to do this, but you don't really feel like playing that game right off the bat after you realize you. Yeah, just... you gotta like accept the loss and then just kind of build <laughs> <Yeah>. back up. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, that was the feeling I, I had, and I'm not gonna say I went through a, a, a slight depression, but I was like a slight damn. This was a lot of uh, stuff I did, but I, like I said, it was a learning experience. Just playing the game that I. Got a few levels on, so I know how to approach these levels now. Because now that I learn something, I did learn about social media is really not about the numbers; it's about the people that support you. Yes. Because I done came across some people that got a kajillion amount of followers, but they still live in check to check. I'm like, if you got 10 million followers, if you was just to ask everyone for a dollar, you should at least come out with 50 thousand now. So yes. it's just like it's it's more about who really supports you than the followers. So that being said, I actually was able to see who really rock with Mo Larry opposed to just seeing what Mo Larry talking about and that's a, a a a big deal so it's a learning experience and then when I get to tell this story on the podcast the spoil force podcast another story so it's like man it's it'll be a, it, at the end of the book it'll be a nice chapter I guess so no that, that's yeah. a great point you brought up too cuz uh comedian Kev on stage he says the same thing too you know it's better to have like 10,000 loyal followers than a million followers who don't do anything for you Yes, because like you, you get nothing in return with just a bunch of likes, and that's honestly that's a, that's kind of a personal goal for myself too. It's not it's not about the amount of likes and stuff. I I personally would rather just have an engaging audience. Mm-hmm. That way you know that they fuck with your material. Because if they don't, yes. if they just follow you, that's there's that's nothing. That's just a click the click of a button yeah it's just yeah it's just like in trying to impress other people well, i got all this on this page but that's all you get out of it though so it's really nothing more than that so yeah finding the ones that really rock with you is the the lesson i learned out of all of that and and all the other stuff i didn't learn from having the other pages that high amounts of numbers i just add this knowledge of this one but it also taught me that because I, I went through a phase, I'm like, man, I understand why people... I can't complain about somebody else being mad at me using their content if I can create my own. Like, I just need to create my own story type deal. So that's the, also the mindset I developed. Like, I can't be mad at a restaurant for cooking their food like this if I can go make my own damn food at home. So that's the, <laughs> the type of mentality I adopted as well through the process of this. So it, it's helped me. You brought up um, Pokemon a little bit earlier. I wanted to kind of just say on the side as well, like... The, the fact that you mentioned a battery falling out, I remember having, you know, those Game Boy Colors, even though they had that little back casing, if that, if that <laughs> clip broke, it was game it's over. over you had to put out. a fucking, yeah, you had to put tape over it, man. I had to do that shit too. I was like, damn, man. Like, and the thing was like that, that casing was only good for like not even a year. You knew that shit was going to break. I think I watched your Pokemon video not too long ago either. And just like seeing the buildup of how you were commentating on how Ash was just constantly battling and you know, and, and going and going until they completely changed his look to finally win. But, you know, that's how I kind of see how you are going right now. You know, even though you've only been doing this for about roughly three years or almost three years, it's kind of like that, you know, where Ash goes, battles, wins, and loses consistently until he finally reaches the end and wins. 
at a whole new new tournament or so. So hopefully right. for, for yourself, maybe you might be close to that tournament and you might win that one, you know? Perseverance. Yeah. Perseverance. Yes. And, you know, people made fun of Ash a lot, too, because he took so many losses. But, man, that guy, he can take a loss. And, and they right, and people make talk all that junk about Ash, but they're not going to beat him in no Pokemon battle if it came down to it. I don't care how clutch a ma- folks' imagination is. If they have to go against the Ash Ketchum in a tournament, you got to chuck that L up. Especially if it's a, a reckless Ash Ketchum. Like, I'm finna call him uh, Mewtwo, you owe me a favor. Lugia, <laughs> you owe me a favor. Deoxys, record. Like, Ash really done been made some major moves. <laughs> he, he, uh... Living like the Avatar. How old is Ang? Like 112? <laughs> 12 year old body? Hey man, Ash made some big time moves. Do you like that new animation for him though? Like they they made him like a lot more slim, but like his eyes are much bigger now. It looks weird to me. I'm not gonna lie. I'll yeah. I, I'm kind of. I kind of fell off because I used to remember off the intros. Uh, oh, Hoenn. That's when I fell off of Pokemon. I didn't really watch any of the Diamond and Pearls. I played the games, but. Just how they just kept cheating Ash, man. I get that he's not <laughs> getting older, and did he ever give Misty that bike back? What happened to Brock? So I just oh, speaking man. of Brock, I think they just confirmed Brock got a girlfriend finally. So that is true, then, huh? yeah. I, I think, didn't. Okay, I think that's the case. After all these years of being thirsty, he finally got some. Right, man. <laughs> also, Jenny used to play him, man. <laughs> Damn girl, you better than your cousin. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was I was hoping that they were gonna put Ash in um, Jump Force since he's you know a, a anime character, but they technically have Red in Smash Brothers already, so yeah. they, I don't know if they can do that. It's crazy to see how like these anime protagonists that we grew up watching just keep growing and evolving. Like even Goku, man, like all these years he's still around too. He's still relevant, and um, you know, I wanted to ask you since you since you watch anime and know your anime as well. Out of all these protagonists, though, which one is still your top one? I'd probably say Naruto. It's sad to see how uh, how Naruto is in Boruto, kind of. But I, I like Naruto, man. I was a kid when Naruto was a kid. When Naruto got married, my wedding was like a few months away. So it was just... Damn, I, I was man, I, I like Naruto's because I didn't watch D- Dragon Ball from like I didn't start at the dun 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 dun. I didn't catch those days as a kid, so I caught that that up in the future. But if I would probably would have watched it from Goku, Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Super, I probably would say Goku. But yeah, I didn't catch that. I went from Z and then I watched Dragon Ball. Then I'm from GT Super type deal. But yeah, Naruto a one day one. Yeah, I feel like I, I was in the Leaf Village with him on that swing set crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta agree 100%. You know, for me myself, like Naruto was someone that I related to the most. Like as much as I loved Goku growing up, seeing him, excuse me, seeing him like fight Frieza, which was one of my favorite battles. But the story of Naruto was you're around his age by the time that show came out, or at mm-hmm. least in America. Yeah. yeah. And then seeing him grow up in Shippuden and then now he's married and has kids. It's like, we're kind of around that age group where he's at and we yeah. can relate to who he is. But with Goku, man, that guy, you know, he's been around all these years. He's still not really taking care of his family. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. He definitely is a different type of father, but he, he put, he put the world on his back a few times. So, Hey, I'll accept it. Without him, a lot of stuff probably wouldn't have been here. What's your thoughts on like uh, those Goku fans though? You know, the one I have a buddy who's like super hardcore Goku. Like he's he's like nobody touching Goku. You know, like he he believes that Goku is the best. I feel like you got to be the. I mean, the arg- the response I always come back with when the Goku film like Goku not even the strongest in his own show, so you can't really throw him out like that. I can understand if he was the strongest in his own show, but. Hell, I mean, he's still having the, he's still trying to train to change his hair another color. So I can't really say Goku can beat everybody. But granted, Goku can flex a lot of people, though, if it was just no whole bars, everybody fight how they need to fight. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think how those Goku fans be like, yeah, Goku can just destroy everybody in every universe. And I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, for, for me, my argument was always like about his intelligence. Because like a lot of people think that Goku could just go in and, you know, bust someone's brains out with one hit. And really, Goku is some, I, I see Goku as someone who is willing to go all out if they if that opponent is, wants to go all out. So for so example. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna ask my question after that. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. So, so, like, for example, like, if for ex- if he ran into Saitama, not knowing that Saitama had that kind of power, 
Goku would force him to go out all out just so that Goku can try to go all out and try to top that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Do you think Goku's a smart fighter? I got an argument with somebody or a debate. Do you think Goku's a smart fighter? I, I think he is. I think he has great battle instinct for sure. But when it comes to like trying to outsmart an opponent like intelligently, I don't think he has that. Like for example, a lot of that fans. Would go way to break that down. Yeah, a lot. A lot of fans like to use the whole Superman and Goku thing, right? I think Goku would not be smart enough to to bring Superman to like a red or a red sun or use Kryptonite. There's no way yeah. he, he'd be that smart. <laughs> yeah. But Goku would be smart enough to, in battle to adapt. So if he knew that Superman only had like laser eyes, right? He knows he he could avoid that easily. I like how you just broke that down. That was, I like how you just broke that down. I I totally agree. I yeah. totally agree. Yes. Uh, hey, I ain't got nothing to say about that no more. You that was perfect. Yeah, hey, I, I know, need to go pick commands with the people I argue man with that answer then. Cause cause the thing is like, folks, the, the whole Goku Superman thing. That thing is that that battle's been going on for years, and you know I I had to really invest myself with superman's knowledge when i was younger because i was just like that too i was like goku can go there and you know he can take out superman he can go super saiyan 3 and end it right but yeah we don't realize like superman's writers he's got over 80 years worth of different people writing his story so right? dep yeah. depending on who he's fighting he goku could be fighting silver age superman and he'd lose for sure because silver yeah. age superman is the one that's like can carry universes and go all over the place he's he had unlimited power so see that and that right there is why it's tough for me to talk about superhero stuff because if i ain't know something like that see fo folks see folks will eat you up if you don't know about that how you just say it's the different variations of superman yeah the whole multiverse is a bitch though man because like everyone would use different versions of different characters man, that's crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just thinking yeah, that's crazy yeah because like um another good example is like batman right everyone says Batman with prep time, but then there's other variants of Batman that's even more, I guess you could say, cruel or more willing to kill. That version of Batman could probably take out Goku, too, if, if folks were willing to argue and listen, but I don't think that's the case. Them, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's going to be a tough conversation to bring to the lunch table. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that, that's I mean, the that's hardest tough. part, man. Goku fans, I'm going to I'm gonna call out Goku fans, dude. Like, Goku fans have the hardest time when it comes to listening to the opposition of the yeah. argument. And I think that's yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. Goku definitely then got saved a lot of times and people, because even though Vegeta liked to train his way up to Kakarot, Vegeta is still two and no against Goku and people still don't like to accept that. Like, well, he cheated, man. It's a fight, man. Bump it. Yeah. Insane. The first time he just worked Goku, and the second time he did, yeah, we ain't got to fight no more, and it knocked it out. But that's Goku fault. Goku always turned his back, and that's that just being naive to what it is. Yeah, Goku's just there for the fight, really. He doesn't really, honestly, he doesn't really care what's going on. He's just there for the fight. Hold on. <laughs> Hold but on. It's a good thing you mentioned Vegeta, though, because if it's Vegeta versus Superman, I'd pick Vegeta, just because I know how smart Vegeta is, too. I yeah. think I think Vegeta would be the type to if he knows he has the advantage he'd take it. See, see I don't know, just like how you said, it's all those different var variations of Superman. I, yeah, it's one of those. It depends. Yeah. Because <laughs> the way Hidden Bear is Vegeta, it was like, dang, I don't know. It, it, the way Dragon Ball does it, it's just it's messed up because they do all this yelling for an episode, and the next time on Dragon Ball is that we find out what all this yelling was for, and now we see what all this yelling was for, and this seems like the most coolest power level up to date, just to be somebody else stronger next episode. <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, Dragon Ball has that tendency to, I don't know, I think I, I, I call it all like, you know, like just like the flashiness of it. Because you can physically, because you can see the animations of their power ups, the the fireballs and everything, and it looks very exciting compared to like if you're watching a, I guess DC animated film where it's just Superman at top speed and it's yeah. boring. So like Dragon Ball Z has all that excitement to it. So a lot of the fans, I think they, what you can see out of that makes it more like they think that that, that can overpower yeah. what other heroes yeah <laughs> that's a nice uh, take on it i don't know man my, my buddy who who's a who's the big goku fan you know like we always go at it in our messages man like we it's it's like we, we go from like talking about the heroes and then it just goes into like a roast battle after. <laughs> <laughs> hey what a turn of events hey. 
<laughs> you know. That's funny. And, and speaking of roasting, man, like you have an, a great ability to just like think on the fly when it comes to like just roasting or you know just anything like that. Is that something that you've naturally always had, like some sort of quick improv? Well, yeah. Uh, my parents were both funny with smart mouths, and I got a, a big forehead plus a, a bad hairline, so I've always been a target just because. So I've always had to been able to stand my own at the lunch table because folks are. Uh, you know how like a, a fat person, uh, you don't even have to think of a funny joke. Most like, man, shut your fat ass up, and folks will laugh. Like I was, my head is big enough for those default type jokes, so I just always had to be able to think of the fly and come back on for something. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, a mix of natural and a mix of learning as I got older. I really like this. I really don't roast that much no more though, because I remember one time I was going in on somebody and I made him cry. And that kind of <laughs> made me feel bad. I don't want nobody like. Because it was just, I'm thinking it's funny, but this person just started crying. And I ain't, yeah. Ever since I made that person feel that shit, I get the, yeah, I don't like the roast like that no more. Graham, if somebody take me there, I will. But just to be on that kind of bullying in a way, I'm not that guy no more. I, that, I felt bogus, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I let him have it that day, but yeah. <laughs> You know, like I, I was never good at roasting people. I, I had to learn like a lot to kind of just even be like quick witted when it comes to just thinking on the fly when to counter someone because I'm terrible. Like I, I have so much, uh, I guess you could say some sort of anxiety when it comes to like when it comes to roasting because you got to think quick. If you don't, if you stutter, it's game over. And I, I used to, yeah. I used to get made fun of so much for that. So I had to practice and learn how to think quick. But even now, I, I. I don't do it. But I learned my lesson too, because if you you know you laugh too loud at the lunch table, you get roasted, and that's what happened Great to me too. You win. <laughs> you win. Yep. Hey. I know you ain't laughing. Yeah. Hey. Man, I got I got hit with so much of that. Man, I stopped. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep my comments to myself. Yeah. Hey, the 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 main thing, if you roasted somebody and you can't think of nothing, you just gotta say something random. And then if that don't make sense, say something even more random than the first time. And then just put it all together. Because the long, it's really more of you ain't even got to say nothing funny. If it's if you say it with the right tone of voice and it's that random, folks just going to laugh because it's the heat of the moment. You, if you don't get your basket head, two left shoe wearing, seat sniffing, curtain still an ass, you feel like <laughs> that was just a whole bunch of random stuff. But <laughs> if you drive on somebody like that, they don't want no trouble with you no more. This man is crazy. So, yeah, if you ever get kind of pickle when it comes roast, just say the first random thing that comes to your mind and just keep pushing. Bump it. And if you speak over somebody, oh, yeah, that's all you really need. You don't give them no time to talk. Is that what you were kind of doing, too, with, if you were still doing your comedic stand-up? Is that something that you were going to implement, too? Like, kind of, like, just picking at the audience and just doing stuff like that? Because I know a lot of stand-up artists do that, too. I personally don't like uh, – I only roast hecklers if I really got to drive on somebody because people come to a comedy show to laugh and have a good time, not to realize that their shoes is dusty as hell and <laughs> they ain't got an undershirt on. So I don't want to mess up something that somebody done pays some tickets for. You feel me? Give them a bad experience. So I really just – I put on a show, but folks in there heckling are too drunk. All right, now it's time to hurt some feelings in this bitch now. So then I, it, it, so it really just depends on how the crowd acting. But no, I'm not really a, a pick them out, flame them type of guy. God, unless it's just I have nothing to say and I don't know what else to do because I got 10 minutes left on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on your way. You feel me? So. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I, I've recently started going to more comedy shows uh, where, where I live in, in Michigan. You know, it, it's it's pretty fun. You know, I, I never realized like even small clubs would have that kind of interaction when it comes to like just meeting local um, comedians or trying to see comedians on the rise when it comes to just that like so like you see i i see like different styles of how like these com comics they just kind of you know do um just like either not so much roasting the audience but like they like to pick on the audience or at least the front row kind of yeah. start a conversation if their material is kind of lacking a little bit or if you see like you know like you said with the hecklers man they go off on those people too yeah because man you you not on stage, so shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, why are you talking, man? Damn. If you want the attention to be on you, we gonna put the attention on you, my boy. Hey. <laughs> and you just hey, take it from there. So yeah, I definitely the worst time I did a heckler was a guy in a wheelchair. He was just drunk and he was just cause I, he was already in a wheelchair, so I didn't want to take it there with him. But hey, he didn't let up, so I really had to. Hey man, come on, Joe from Family Guy, chill, my boy. Hey, what you in a rush for? You ain't got nowhere to step out to, so. I... <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I just think, but yeah. He, he he invited that to himself though, man. So yeah, after uh, I'm hoping like once stuff opens back up and we get to whatever our new normal is, I can go back on stage because it was also different for me on stage because I'm a if a person doesn't understand me or understand how my imagination works, I really I'm really that weird guy. Like man, I don't get it. he up here on stage talking about Dragon Ball Z. That I mean I watch it, but I I'm not gonna laugh because I don't want everybody else knowing I watch Dragon Ball Z type deal. But now people understand who Mo Larry is and they know how kind of the Mo Larry imagination works. They know what to expect. So I'm ready to get back out there and, you know, be cool. Because a lot of people, man, it's tough being on stage. That's a, Have you ever did an open mic before? No, I, I mean, I, I used to, um, I guess, open mic such as, like, playing the guitar and singing. I used to do that uh, a few years ago. But not so much, stand like, doing stand-up. Like, stand-up, I don't know, man. The, the writing style is way different. Because you got to engage an audience that's looking at you instead of just, like, seeing a different talent when it comes to, like, rapping or singing and having music in the background man like when you're i i can only imagine just standing there and it's just quiet and if they don't react to your jokes and you bomb like that it just kind of piles up so like i I don't think i could face that kind of anxiety (laughs) add it to your bucket list because it's like just getting on a roller coaster if you're looking at that roller coaster hearing those people scream you get the man i don't know about that but after you get on and get up you get okay i might want to get on again because yeah, yeah, and then you'll see some people that'll do way worse than you gonna think that you'll ever do. So that'll also motivate you a little. It's one of those where if they can do it, why am I nervous about doing the type deals? But yeah, it's a, it's definitely a, a different type of uh, I don't want to call it a talent, just a different type of deal to do. It's weird, but yeah, it's uh, it's cool though. I think you add it to your bucket list, man. Add it to your bucket list. One day you're gonna be at a spot and you're gonna have the chance to do it, and you're gonna debate should I get on and do it or not. I'm going to pop in your head and say, hey, go ahead and do it. <laughs> for sure, man. I'll definitely take a chance on that for sure in the future. But, yeah, but public speaking is like, man, it, it's nerve-wracking. Like, I already have, like, a hard time just, like, looking at people when it comes to, like, just talking in person. <laughs> so, like, I can only imagine just having a crowd of people just staring at me. I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely done been in that, that position before, and it was kind of nerve wracking. But I I got over that for sure. Not <laughs> not doing like stand up. That that that's pretty much really helped you with like how you I guess not so much interaction, but I guess some way of like self confidence. Are you building up like how you know what kind of material you want, you want to write and solidifying that? And is that something that helps? I guess the way of writing or doing stand up that kind of that transition for you right now when you're doing all your videos or commentary has that been an easier transition for you i don't know i, I kind of feel like what i'm doing now is easier than the stand-up thing man because the the internet man after folks start making funny videos like it's crazy because stand-up comedy is in its own is its own island but folks on the internet see something funny and they just throw that into the comedy category so it's kind of like now folks who do stand-up comedy have to compete with funny people on the internet and it's not the same thing so it's really in its own entity because some people can just uh just like how you said you can sit up here we can just keep talking but getting on the stage is a different type of deal so it's it's kind of different i mean i'm I'm sure it's probably helped me in some ways but i kind of feel like what i'm doing now is more lazier than just trying to get on stage and talk to people in person that makes sense so uh, yeah because i was doing comedy first and i didn't really want to pop on the internet wave and start doing stuff but it's like man the way the world going I, i gotta adjust adapt or get trapped so huh, it's kind of it, it, and it's kind of made me uh what's the way to put it i don't want to say dull but like if i go out and do some comedy i'm engaging with people i'm in front of people i'm interacting so my energy is different but just doing stuff on the internet i'm at home i'm looking up clips of stuff i'm cropping stuff out and i'm in my own area just doing my own thing so it's like i'm not really around too many people so now that me being engaging kind of I mean, like being engaging to somebody in person is different than just replying to comments on the internet. So it kind of yeah. made me, uh, I don't want to say stale, but just a little more dry than I used to be. Yeah, in in person uh, interaction definitely makes a huge difference. Like even in podcasting, like, like I know that what I'm doing right now with the whole audio call or like even webcaming stuff, it, it's still pretty interactive. But having a guest like in person, it's a way different um, vibe. Because yeah. you, you can see their interactions, you can see the body language, you can see them feeding off your energy, and, and it goes back and forth. So I can definitely see how comics, when it comes to stand-up, you can gauge the audience and see the energy there. 
versus like doing a funny video and clips, which is what a lot of comics are doing, or I guess you could say internet comedians are doing now, where they just you know commentate on uh on funny clips or put their thoughts on on stuff like that, and that's kind of like this whole new wave of comics that's on uh that's on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, and then like a person could just keep, you know, you can take as long as you want to to do a video if you don't feel like you want to like this well you can nobody sees it until you upload it but on when you on stage or in front of people what you do is what they see so yeah is this you gotta be there, there's there's no redos up there some Persia dagger on you but yeah no redos yeah you know, I, I wanted to ask you this too i know last week was uh supposed to be for DreamCon. Uh, 2020 i was actually planning to go there la- uh, last week before this whole like covid stuff happened um and and you mentioned that you got to to see fun the people at fun funimation and stuff and i think I, if i remember correctly you also got to meet uh daquan wilchite right was that at DreamCon? yeah no that wasn't i haven't been to DreamCon before i, I also i met wilshire whenever we went to the funimation thing we had did a podcast uh, I don't, yeah, a podcast with, it was me, Will Shire, Emma Fry, and Bardock Obama, Bardock, yeah, Bardock Obama, and then uh, just a quick little 10-question deal over the Tournament of Power, and that's when I met them at, but uh, I didn't meet, yeah, I haven't been to DreamCon, I got invited, well, I didn't even get invited, I submitted to do a panel for this one, so I would have been there doing a panel, but yeah, c- Corona shut that down, but took it as a deal because I'm like, man, I, my goal was to actually get invited to there. Like, I want to actually get invited to these deals and not have to submit an application and have to. Like, you feel me? Like, I want yeah. to get invited. So, I'm, I, it just gives me one more year to work a little harder and to make it happen. Because I never really was a convention type person, so I wanted my first convention to be DreamCon that I'm actually mobile and moving around to. But yeah, Corona stopped that, or at least paused it. So, hopefully next year when it pops off, I'm more relevant than i am today and they ain't got no choice but to bring me on i think you have a good chance because dreamcon is still a very you could say like young convention you know like they already see guys you know it's only been less than four years so yeah. i know for sure they'll definitely try to bring more content creators on board you know like seeing guys like uh you know caleb city there um long beach griffey king vader to see how to see how much they've grown because of like dreamcon and meeting fans and growing their fan base i think for you mo i think you could definitely reach that kind of level as well and from i I, i've never been there myself but i've seen videos i was planning to go there and like interact with the you know with all the the artists there because like from what i've seen it looks like they they kind of just walk around you know it's not like a regular convention where they sit at the table all day they interact with the fans and walk around and stuff so definitely i think that'll work for you for sure yeah yeah, yeah, and I got uh, one more year to make myself even. It's like another year in the time chamber. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking of it. So, yeah, I look forward to it, man. I, I, shouts out to them. I did meet them because uh, I got, when the Broly movie came out, I got invited to the premiere. And then uh, all those people that you just named got invited to it as well. So I got to introduce myself to them. Granted, a lot of people don't know me because I really don't show my face that much. It's just Muzz got to hear my voice like, hey, wait, is you that one dude that made the Dragon Ball movie? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I kind of like that because it's like walking around and people don't know. So I ain't really got, I can just be chilling. But, yeah, I got to meet them. They all cool and stuff like that. It was, It's cool to see, man. I like people being trying and just being productive and just trying to perfect their craft and their talent and inspiring other people to do what they want to do always a push for for that movement because that's what folks need man yeah definitely like a creative outlet is something that a lot of folks needs these days you know like everyone especially during this epidemic and Mm -hmm. i think with with having creative outlets like podcasting and and online comedy and stuff i think that's great a great way for People who who don't who may not know that they have those kind of talents to kind of just surface, you know, and I think it's, it's a great idea to kind of just start now. Yeah. But but I wanted to ask you this as well, you know, not I know that you just mentioned that you you've met those other content creators, but have you considered like trying to collaborate with them as well? Man, I, I've tried. I I just sent a lot of emails out of my day, even before folks knew. Like like I said, I've only been doing this for two years and some change. Because I'm a, I'm a really a one man army. 
because I've tried to network with some people around my area, but everybody want to be the main character, and it don't work like that. Though. I try to tell them, like everybody can't be Superman in the Justice League, man. Everybody, we need some Flashes, we need some Batmans, but everybody want to be the Superman. Get that, can't nothing work out like that then. So I've kind of been a one man army. I didn't try to shoot emails out to people, but I don't think I'm uh, relevant enough in their eyes yet to actually get catch their attention. So. I mean, it is what it is, cause but well, I definitely done tried though. I, I definitely done shot emails out. <laughs> I guess uh we'll see next year when I'm at the DreamCon and I'm better than I am today. And hey, they ain't got no choice because I'm in their face. I, I can definitely relate to that too, you know, cause like for myself, I I was in a group when I first started podcasting, but now being on my own, a spoiler for us, like just like you said, just being this one man army and just shooting a shot at at everyone you know and just taking whatever opportunity you can it is it does get pretty like difficult and it does drain you out because like you're you're on your own you know it's and a lot of folks don't see that that struggle of being a content creator when it comes to just that and uh you know not not taking away anything from like these other content creators who have teams and everything but because they have a team it kind of lightens their load a little bit it definitely does teamwork makes the dream work for sure so it's definitely uh Grant, I'm sure it may have its own stressful issues as well, but boy, hey, doing everything by yourself is stressful in its own. So, yeah, oh man, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, yeah, Whew. I definitely know how it is to be the one man army, though. But like I said, it taught me though how to just do other stuff, though, because I mean, I know how to record, I know how to edit, I know how to write, I know how to present. So, I mean, if that's what I have to go through to learn everything I learn still up to this day, hey, I'll take it. Yeah, it makes I you would. makes you valuable at the end, man. Because like, you can right. do you can do whatever they ask you to do. If they if they uh-huh. want you to just crop and edit, you already know how to do that. That's easy work. Personally, though, man, even though I'm a I'm a, a cool personality and an outstanding person, I really like to write. Like I like I, I like to write for other people because I my comedy, like I said, I, I uh, dulled down a tad bit than when I used to be. I used to be like just a little more wild, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, just don't care type deal, but. I didn't, Got married, got older, got a little more mature, so I endured down a little bit. But other people still in their phases of wildness. So all the stuff that I didn't wrote down, I wish I would have done when I didn't give a damn. I like to just, hey, you just to be funny if you present it like this, like that type deal. But really, ain't found a solid team the right way or right for. You know, I think there's um there's one there's one guy that I I spoke with last year. I don't know if you know who who he is, but uh, Dontarian Kelly. He's also. Uh, up and coming uh, I guess you could say internet comedian as well he does like skits and stuff too and he interacted with the guys at DreamCon and he recently reached over a thousand subscribers just last year and I got to to talk with him on the podcast too and he, he's an up-and-coming guy that uh you know that does a lot of writing too so maybe you can kind of sh- kind of shoot your ideas at him too maybe you guys can collab too and it's, it's always I always find it that it's good to work with people who are like around the same level as you too you know I, I know that with all the big names out there it's great for your for your platform but to kind of rise up with people who are on the same ground as you i think that's what makes it more successful for sure definitely definitely, because everybody kind of on the same page so they understand the goal yeah because yeah it's kind of hard to yeah yeah i definitely understand what you're saying i definitely understand what you're saying huh teamwork make the dream work though oh my goodness what's your favorite pokemon I want that guy. What's your favorite Pokemon? Or, or I'll put it like this. If you was going to Professor Oak and you can get any Pokemon, excluding legendaries, which Pokemon are you asking for? Man, my go-to has always been Charmander. That's why I chose Pokemon Red. The fact that, oh. I don't know, I, I, I guess it's just like the fact that he just stood out to me, you know, with the flame tail, the lizard and stuff. And even in the anime, you know, Ash spammed the shit out of Charmander. That's why he didn't yes, listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so like I, I have always liked Charmander up to like you know where he evolves into Charizard. I've always I think that with the anime that like, kind of made me always like that, and the fact that Charizard was a bit of a dick too. You know, like he didn't really care so much, and up until where he realized like oh sh- oh shoot, you know like Ash is pretty good to me, so I got to start right, being yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I wonder what Charizard level had to be then since he was disobeying Ash for a while. And Charizard, because, you know, in the Pokemon game concept, if, yo, if your Pokemon level too high and you ain't got enough badges, they ain't listening to you. But then Ash was in the Indigo Plateau where the, the, the Pokemon League fighting and Charizard still wasn't listening. 
Yeah, it was that, a one hundred and one or something. Then I, I think th- if that's the case, I think Ash must have like really overpowered Charizard. But like even even then, like you know, with with Charizard's character, I always found it funny because like everyone loved him until he went to the uh, that area where all the Charizards were training. He was the little runt compared to everyone right? else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely. Hey, now that I'm thinking about that though. Essentially, Ash really didn't earn all his gym badges from like beating the trainers. It was always like a feel me like you remember he beat Sabrina. That was like that gym. He did he even really beat Sabrina? Or did he just make her like come to a realization that hey, you ain't that crazy type deal? I, I think honestly, Haunter is the reason why he he got he even got that badge. Haunter came yeah. in clutch. For and sure. yeah, and then Hunter wasn't even his Pokemon technically. So yeah. <laughs> he got help from the outside source. <laughs> and, and then the Earth badge, it was Team Rocket filling in for Giovanni. Oh and yeah. Was, so yeah, I don't know. He didn't have a lot of yeah, a lot of loopholes. So I don't know, man. But shouts out to Ash catch him. He still got him a trophy, damn it. So hey, it worked if it got him to where he at today. Tuh. You, you know, you spoke about writing, and I, I I was watching one of your lives. You said you were. Uh, writing two comic book series or manga issue like yeah is that something you're still working on yes i am i got a uh, one called mo heroes mo problems and the other one will be called the above uh the above is like a i'm not, it's not really more serious but it got an in-depth story so it's kind of hard to give a skim run through because if i do i'm gonna miss some stuff out and the story gonna sound stale but the mo heroes mo problems that's mo larry as a character and i'm a top flight bounty hunter and i'm out here trying to get world peace for the land i'm living in so it's basically for me as a bounty hunter to get world peace i need to take out the people that's causing the disruption and then i need to find certain items to bring back the world peace so for example one issue i had fought this dude who was called uh basically it was a person that was a big ass vegetable monster but this the blood of this vegetable monster can make a great garden so in order for me to get world peace i need to bring back some stuff like fruits and vegetation to the land so i need to go take this big ass vegetable monster out so it's kind of like a parody of mo larry but it's still got a nice little story and a plot but it's just funny me as a character as a bounty hunter fighting with other heroes because my hero doesn't have any real powers like no fire beams or nothing. my power is to, is to enhance other people's powers so i really kind of not necessarily manipulate, but I'm a, I know the mission, but I'm going to talk and convince other people to get the job done, and I just collect my reward and keep it moving type deal. So, it's a, <laughs> yeah, I can so. definitely see that more like as a like as like as a comedic video game for sure. Like that, especially with the way how the, how, you're, how you are as a person to, with that ca- kind of character with the sarcasm and kind of just seeing everything for the big picture and just reacting to it. I can definitely see like there's a lot of comedic edge to that. No, yes. no. Is it a comic book or is it a manga? Because so like, it, 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 I mean, it, they're really the same thing. It's just the you know, is it like more yeah. anime style? So, so what that is? Because me doing research, I actually learned this. So a manga is basically a comic book that's written in Japan. So a person can't be in America and they create a manga because it has to be like a you create that in Japan type deal for it to be technically a manga. And okay. if you create a manga in America, it's not a manga; it's a comic. So they really the same thing. Is just the 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 grounds you created it on. So I did a lot of writing when I was in Jamaica, so I call it a manga. (laughs) 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 Yeah, so that was basically the same thing. The above, I I give a a manga type feel, but like I said, it's it's still a comic book though, at the end of the day, since it's made on American soil. Uh, You had had like an artist uh, do your artwork, right? Yeah, because I'm terrible at drawing. I make some cold stick figures, but (laughs) as far as uh, (laughs) can you draw me a portrait for my family? Yeah, I'm the wrong guy to ask that question. (laughs) But yeah, the the stories, um, I'm probably going to start promoting them because I want to have the same artists as I'm working on these. So I've been building relations, but they also got their own projects as well, too. So they got to still do their stuff. But my birthday is next month. Well, some people can listen to this later, so next month can be any time. July 19th is my birthday, so that's when I was going to start promoting and talking about and kind of easing into that change, man. Because, that, like I said, a lot of people, some people in the Mo Larry fan base just here for Mo Larry's reviews, but some people are here for the Mo Larry himself. So this will separate a lot of people. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, man, that's the, the way that I'm stepping to because I've gotten in trouble so many times talking about other people's content. Like, you know what, Mo Larry, you got an imagination, you got paper and a pen, and you know people that can draw. You really got all the ingredients you need, so make it happen. 
Yeah, that, that's like, great, man, to, to use like another way of creativity with another outlet. You know, I think, um, you know, just even writing itself, that art form of writing is kind of like slowly dwindling now. And a lot of people don't really have that kind of creative process no more because everyone's just either quick to make some, some something funny, like, you know, for example, like memes, you know, it's very quick. And yeah. uh, it's not there's not a lot of content that's like being very concentrated on and work worked on for years. It's ever it's very quick pace now. Yes. And then I also just want to step on the side of like even though I'm a content creator, uh my content is coming off of somebody else's content still, essentially. I wanna have my own content if that makes sense. Like my create something for my own deal. Like some people have YouTube channels and they don't do nothing but review other people's YouTube channel work and it's like okay that's cool there's nothing wrong with that but like there's still a are you going to create something of your own at the end of the day right. so, don't like, so yeah I, I just don't want to end my life and be like dang all I did was talk about somebody else's stuff and never made anything of my own so yeah gotta do it while I'm young it's good to, to kind of have that kind of thinking you know instead of like just reviewing I, yeah like the review, reviewing and stuff like that that's all kind of like big now because everyone has their opinion but mm-hmm. to to just kind of make your own content is some it, it's more rewarding that way because you know yeah. you know you worked on it and you know you put your own time and effort into it yes and hopefully folks understand well if i can uh make you understand somebody else show this cool hey he gotta have an imagination for his own story then so yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely. I want yeah, I just want to be, I want to get it out the way as early as I can. So as time progresses, because uh, Jump Force only came out like Jump Force is the 50, 50 year anniversary of the Shonen stories. So it was like fifty years ago somebody made that, and now Jump Force is out. So they probably not playing the game, but at least they can see how much people respect their creativity. And I just want to be able to see that when I'm old, like okay, cool, look at my characters now, type deal. That's a good way to to end things too, you know, just to see how like how far your career has gone, and not just, like, you know, like the way how you, the way how it's been put. It sounds like you know you don't want no, no regrets when it comes to creating your content. You know, you don't want to miss yeah. out on any opportunities that could present itself. So I think creating your own stories or characters or you know your own timelines, it, it's something from you, and it's not like where you're, you know, like you were saying, it's not like where you're reviewing someone else's art. You mm-hmm. know, you put your stuff out there, and that's. That's you. Yeah, so that's the, the thing I'm trying to, to do, man. The move I'm trying to make, and I use that step to make another move. So, yeah, it's just as long as the move is forward, I feel it's progressive and productive. I hate to cut this short, but I, I, I want to thank you for, for this opportunity to be on the podcast and stuff, you know, and uh, just for being uh, patient with me as well, you know, because I went on that hiatus and uh, and everything. I know we were going to record this like a month ago, but <laughs> we got to do it today, which is good. Um, and uh you know i i gotta say i'm very grateful for this opportunity to to talk with someone whose content i've seen pretty much almost from the start and see where you've gone and to see to listen to your ups and downs and 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 being a content creator and still persevering you know like for myself i've only started this podcast for just a little over a year and facing adversity you know like yeah i don't think i could i don't think Hearing what you've gone through, I don't know if I could handle that right now, but I think maybe in the future, once I start learning more and hearing other people's experiences, I'll also kind of just like apply that for myself, you know, so thank you for sharing your experiences and I hope, I hope everything goes well for you and I hope everything goes um, plus ultra for you, right? <laughs> plus ultra, on justice, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's much appreciation. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, I get, uh, every time I get in my feelings about something not going the way I planned it to go, I get the, man, what else do I really got to do? So I might as well just get out this emotional wave I'm in and just, hey, get back up type deal. An analogy somebody had told me, and I kind of just remember it every time, they was like, if you watch a baby trying to learn how to walk, as many times as they fall they get back up so you don't have that that motivation and that drive inside of you you just lost to getting older but hey act like a baby if you fall down get your ass back up and keep trying until you learn how to walk and then you're running and hey you're on your way then man so that's the analogy i always think about when i'm out here in my feelings about something oh yeah man hopefully uh you're getting your little feelings on you get that hey, man I was a toddler before, and I didn't know how to walk. And damn it, I'm walking on both of my feet now, so I can do anything I need to do, man. Do you have any, uh, I guess, shout-outs or plugs you'd like to say before we wrap things up? 
Um, if I had to shout anybody out, shouts out to the Spoil Force podcast for putting me on. Uh, shouts out to my reflection for looking just like me. Um, that's really about it, man. I really, because <laughs> if I get to thinking about, shouts out to my little v wife for putting up with me. Um, that's really about it. Because if I get to trying to shout out, yeah, shout out to my cousin BJ and shout out to my cousin AJ, <laughs> shout out to my cousin DJ, and my cousin CJ gonna be like, hey, what about me? You forgot about me, so hey, they just have, <laughs> have to catch me on another video or something, man. But yeah, and, that's, um, uh, and and how fans can uh, interact or reach you if they um, want to check out your content as well. Man, and that, that's always tough for me with the way my pages be going. I don't want to say something now. And then folks say, hey, where that page you just said on the podcast <laughs> at? So first thing I say, man, hey, if you just Google Mo Larry if you're looking for me. Hopefully where I'm at will pop up. If it don't, that means I'm hiding and I ain't trying to pop up anyway. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way I can put it right now. I'll definitely have your uh, Instagram and YouTube for sure. Um, I'm not too sure about your Facebook. I'll put your Facebook links up for sure, but I'll definitely have your YouTube and Instagram for fans to check out your content. Much appreciation. Much appreciation. Thank you for having me and all that good stuff, man. This was a great conversation. Like I said, man, I was excited to have you on, and um, it, it, it's been great. So uh, for folks who are listening, definitely check out Mo Lowry's content. I am not lying when I say that his content is great. And uh and definitely check out his videos, man. And um, oh, speaking of, you have a Patreon as well, right? I do patreon.com slash Mo Larry. It's crazy because like OnlyFans page, but yeah, I, I do have a, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a Patreon. And that's really the video vault. So all the stuff that then got deleted previously, I didn't realize how many videos I didn't made until I start uploading on Patreon. Like it's, it's crazy, man. I did a lot of stuff. Like I it was months where I would upload a video every day, and I didn't, like thirty videos seem like a lot when you're just looking at them in a folder. And I did it for multiple months. But yeah, I got a Patreon as well, and yeah, I'm just one day at a time. All right, folks. So you heard that Mo Lowry has a Patreon. So if you want to check out his, uh, his videos from the beginning till now. Definitely help support him as well. And, uh, you know, I hope we can do something like this again, Mo Lowry. It's been great. For those uh, of you who are listening, I hope hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, have a great night. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. For comments, questions, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me on Instagram at instagram.com slash rickyvang92.